the bench episode dozen one to the dirty dozen the dirty dozen the dirty here we dozen. are here we are greg platzer guitars greg platzer uncle greg grumpy that old ex man ex grumpy old man but still grumpy old man but we love you for that yeah i'll always be a grumpy old man yeah you're a grumpy old man in your late 20s was that right I was born grumpy, son. Okay. <laughs> I was soiling diapers with a grumpy attitude. All right. Right. And just get used to it, all right? Yeah, yeah. So what has been up? Um, Fuck two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, all kinds of stuff. Uh, working hard. Surrounded by cars. Um, uh, yard work. Um. New band. New band. Uh, Primetime Heroes. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, and uh, it's uh, my old buddy, Brian Seneca, who I do an acoustic gig with the first two, first Saturday of every month. Your stepbrother. At, yeah. At, uh, <laughs> and there's plenty of room for activities. Um, we, uh, we play the first Saturday of every month at a place called the Blue Sky uh tavern yeah very and, enjoyable oh i love that place so much eric fee the owner is just amazing and, yeah nice and, guy he came um, up to me and he introduced himself and yeah yeah he's terrific he's just yeah. terrific and he gets it he's a music fan mm -hmm. and he knows how to run a, a club and uh, uh it's just a great time so first first saturday of every month and um so uh the band i was in for 27 years 25 years so grumpy ended last fall and so i had the first saturday of the month uh reserved for grumpy so when the band broke up i went to eric and i said hey can i still have the first saturday of the month he goes man do whatever you want you know you want to do a circus go ahead and so uh, i called my buddy brian who uh is one of the closest things i've had to a brother mm -hmm. and he's a ridiculously talented individual mm -hmm. um and I said, let's do an acoustic night. And we started doing that. And um, they're just, everything's legal. You know, like yeah. you start a song, we're going to finish it. And we take requests. And uh, I just got a note that my internet collect, uh, connection is unstable. We'll see how that plays. Yeah. But uh, Yay. Um, so uh, uh, I, I'm using Michael Hilligus, the, the drummer uh, from Grumpy. We, uh, our, our drummer left uh actually like in the middle of the night he started booking with another band didn't tell anybody uh -huh. and, uh, so uh we went through this arduous audition uh process and ended up with, uh, with a fantastic drummer by the name of michael hilligus uh late of the chris woodward band Not and uh, i've known him since he was a kid so chris woodward is what kind of music uh country okay got it N northern pa and he's I mean, he's got records out nationally and a okay. uh, great songwriter, really, really good fella. Um, and uh, so uh, we needed a bass player and I had several people that were going to audition. And the first guy in the door I met, he was the drummer in a country band called Chapel Hill. And I met him uh, at a gig where I was playing with uh, my girlfriend, Sarah's country band, the Grant Bryan band. And uh, I had no idea. No, he was the drummer of that band. He was, yeah, he was a drummer at Chapel Hill. Okay. And uh, um, we talked about Harleys. You know, we talked about bikes and stuff like that. And then I found out that he actually has a degree in music. And he uh, ran a, a guitar center. But the coolest thing is he's co-owner of the Green Room Recording Studio, uh -huh. and uh, which is a nationally known recording studio. And so he wanted to audition. And so we gave music to a bunch of people and he came to the very first audition and we actually didn't even start in on the audition songs. We just started, I just started throwing shit out there to see how he would react. And, and he just lined right up. And uh, when we actually did the audition songs, he knew them and, uh, and it was great. So oh. it was like, boom, there it is. And uh, one of those things where I'm glad we auditioned him first because we might've, come across 
a bunch of people that we were real jazzed about, then he would have come along and just laid them all to waste. Uh -huh. um, so by starting out with him first, it basically saved a whole lot of heartache. Um, and uh, so we're going to be doing uh, 70s, 80s, 90s rock and roll originals. Uh -huh. We have no plans of going on tour. We have no plans of making lots of records. N none of that. We're, we're just going to have a really good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, our first gig is September 10th at Dirt Stock, which is uh, uh, Colt Wilbur's uh, charity gig that he has okay. every summer. I think we play at like 7.15 in the evening. Okay. And uh, so we're working on that. But been doing that. Um, I'm always behind on repairs. Always. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a hard time saying no. So if somebody reach out to me, hey, Greg, can you completely rebuild this guitar with nothing but toothpaste and uh, uh, one 10 millimeter socket? And I'll say, yeah, of course I can. Send it to me. And I found myself with so much work now that I can't take on anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's all about being productive. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I'm working away at being uh It needs to be said again, and we can talk about this, like the the Les Paul Project guitar from your, um, who the, the, the one who has the cancer. Justin. Justin, Justin. yes. Yeah. You can see this on, uh, I have an Instagram page, uh -huh. Greg Platzer Guitars, yeah. uh, which is linked to a that Facebook is art, page. That is artistry. That is artistry. You, yeah, it's I, right I, here. What you did to that is like bananas. Well, Justin Smith is a great guy. And uh, here's the high speed recap. My phone rings. It's a girl. She's in a guitar center in De somewhere in Delaware. Uh, I don't know, you know. And she's like, uh, I was given your number. Uh, my, my brother's guitar was run over. It shattered. He's in the hospital uh, dealing with cancer. I want to get it fixed for him. Um, through a bizarre series of events. And if you go back and listen to either number 10 or 11, I don't know which one we talked about on probably it, 10 or 11, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, hang on a sec. I got to turn that off. That's, that's rock stars bothering me. Um, they have time to bother people. Um, but anyway, uh, I end up with the guitar. It was completely shattered. Um, most people would throw it away. Uh, but this kid, I wanted to do something for him. And so if you go to my Instagram, you'll see that it's the step Justin. by step. And uh, the headstock was completely shattered. And there you can see it is no longer completely shattered. And is, uh, yeah. it's kind of hard it's, in this lighting. There you go. It looks perfect. In this lighting, huh. it looks perfect. And so uh, what's happened to it. But yeah, the lacquer's curing. Um, and. Uh, and he has a, a, a gig in October. Okay. And I, I told him that he has to do the easy part. He just has to, you know, basically survive cancer. I'll do the hard part and fix his guitar. Yeah. And uh, so uh, that's what we're doing. And uh, he's, I, I'm just, I'm happy to have met him. And, you know, my, my dad had cancer. Uh, he ended up, he had 12 remissions over 20 years. Uh, um, and so I, I got a soft spot um, for yeah, anybody that has to deal with that kind of stuff. And, uh, and this Justin is just a great kid. And uh, uh, not to me, he's a kid. He's like 30 years old. Um, but, uh, um, and, you know, it's kind of like a, a cool personal challenge to make this guitar work again. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing is I put it up on my Instagram and within five minutes, somebody called me up and said, I want to pay for that repair. I don't care what it costs. I'm going to pay for it. So Justin doesn't have to pay for it. That was paid for five minutes after I posted the first pictures. There is, there is a, there's good in this world. The musician community is amazing. Yeah. And uh, um, this guy uh, from, uh, from Philadelphia reached out and said, well, what can I do? And I said, well, he needs a case. And a couple of days later, a case arrives um a brand new case um um i've been asking my some of my rock star friends to shoot little videos and send to him uh mm -hmm. to inspire him and um it it it's just good to be part of something like this and good energy. Uh, and i look forward to us you know on oh i don't know you know that might be by the we might be at 17 18 by the time yeah. you know yeah 
he actually plays it on stage, but I, I can't wait to show you pictures of, and he's, he's a shit hot guitar player. All right. um, so I can't wait to show you pictures of him playing his guitar on stage. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the musicians. How far do we have to go? Uh, well, the lacquer is curing. Um, okay. How long does that take to cure? Uh, several weeks. Cause I use nitrocellulose lacquer. Okay. And I've been taking it up and letting it sit in the sun, uh, which is kind of like speed curing it. Uh, cause it's been so warm lately. So it's, it's, it's comfortable to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you, when you warm it up in the sun, the lacquer gets really, really soft and, um, w until it's cured. So then you have to be super, super careful not to touch it afterwards. So that's why I started doing this. I, 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 uh, I take, uh, I, I took a wire hanger and I cut up, made hooks on the ends. And, and now, uh, I, you can see there, I just hang the guitars up by their butts from the ceiling now, most of them. And, uh, that way I don't have to, don't have to touch the guitars. And, uh, I don't know, I just put light in the background like anybody cares <laughs> mm. but um uh, looks yeah. like a work working area at yeah. the bench this is the bench yes. this is the bench here i'll show you this is here's the tools yep there's, there's the les paul i'm working on uh that's a nice fella named matt sent me that and uh um i got i got so much stuff here it's crazy kids it's crazy i'm telling you but uh yeah, I mean it's 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 kind of fun. Um and uh uh let's see what else. Oh, I got rid of Facebook. Yes. yes. I I'm an alcoholic, I'm an addict. Um 37 years of sobriety, but Facebook is designed to take people like me and make them non-productive. Mm -hmm. And um uh, it just seemed like there were way too many temptations to look away from my work and I have to have my phone here because I got to talk to my customers. I take photographs of the work and put it on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to step away from Facebook and I deactivated my account and I log in every Sunday and basically suspend it for another seven days before okay. I, you know, cause if I'm debating whether or not to completely just delete it, but, there's so much cool stuff on there, photographs yeah. of stuff. And, you know, I, I'm probably going to have to spend a month or so pulling down like all these great images of friends that I, that I don't have anymore and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But uh, um, the interesting thing is I am so much more productive now. Um, I'm ADD and nowadays they lumped ADD and, ADHD together. I'm not hyperactive, but um, yeah, we're in the same boat there. Yeah. And, um, but it's hard for me to focus, but once I focus, when you break that focus, um, then I'm really uncomfortable. And, um, Facebook was breaking my focus all the time. In fact, everybody watching this, uh, I would highly recommend that you turn off your notifications, which is the first thing I did because this thing would make a noise like it just did a, a couple minutes ago. Every time uh, somebody commented on a post I made or, you know, I don't even know what, you know what the parameters were, but when I turned off my notifications, it was a little more peaceful, but the thing still lit up and I still turned and looked at it. Um, by not having my Facebook, uh, my bandmates are pretty pissed because it's an extra having, way to, having to, to uh publicize a band and don't have a Facebook page. Especially since like I have the widest reach of, of everybody, uh -huh. um, but I'm sure all the, but you, you, all the other thing is that you, uh, you don't have any delusionary dreams of uh, like I'm super rock stardom. Oh no. no, so no the, it's too late for me. Yeah. Um, so it's but, like, uh, people oh, and promoting the band in friggin' Nevada isn't going to do any damn good. Yeah. I mean, you know, so, but the, there is a, there's a Facebook page for the new band primetime heroes, which I haven't even seen yet, but, uh, um, yeah, by getting rid of, of Facebook, um, I'm, I'm calmer. Uh, I'm getting more work done. I'm not as nowhere near as frustrated. I didn't realize just how much time I spent on Facebook until I wasn't on Facebook. 
first two days, literally, like I was out, I was riding and I saw this beautiful sunset and I thought, I got to pull over and take a picture and make that my cover photo. People will enjoy that. And I thought, no, I don't know anybody that. And God gave me this view for me. This is for me to see and to enjoy. I don't need to share it. This is, you know, they can, they can see their own. And, you know, like all these things would happen and I'd oh, I can't wait to post about this. And I realized that I was looped into that, you know, letting people wait. It is like a drug. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm an addict and, and, uh, I was, I was letting people too far into my life. Yeah. And, uh, did you have, do you have any other negative effects of, of letting people too far into your life? Oh, there have been situations in the past, but usually like as a result of band activity where, when I had my guitar shop, I would talk to somebody at a gig. Like there'd be like, you know, uh, somebody sitting at the bar and I'd walk up to get another glass of water and I'd just say, Hey, how you doing? And we'd start talking and the, you know, like there was one guy who was about my age. I didn't know him, but we were just talking and everything like that. He started coming into my guitar shop that I, that I had up until last year. He was coming in all the time just to hang out because he thought, we were friendly mm-hmm. but we weren't friends yeah, yeah but he was coming in all the time and he was actually getting underfoot and he was acting as if he belonged there yeah uh, because he had this bizarre delusion that because i talked to him at, at, a, at a bar gig that you know he was now part of the inner circle and stuff like that yeah and it was a it was an uncomfortable thing when i actually had to say to him look man you know i'm glad you came out to see my band um interesting thing is he only came up the one time he didn't come see us anymore but he would come into the store yeah yeah i don't know it was just a weird thing and mm-hmm. so yeah it's, he got too far into that he, he didn't come to my house and kill me while i slept but mm-hmm. you know it was just kind of like you know what no john lennon yeah i uh David chapman i i'm a very friendly person and i guess sometimes i, I might be too friendly but i'll take that chance mm-hmm. i'll take that chance. yeah What's up with you, man? I've been doing all the talking. Talk to me, buddy. Yeah, building, building my empire, one brick <laughs> at a time. Tell me about this base you want me to work on. Where'd you get okay. it? It was gifted to me, and a, a student of mine died. Oh, that's a terrible yeah. way to get a guitar. Yeah. So it was a it was a sixty nine or seventy precision base. Cool. So I have heroes in the bass world. Like I, my Excalibur base is, is the, uh, is Warwick. Mm-hmm. Oh, that doesn't do everything. Warwick right. doesn't do everything. It's like, I have like Jamerson, like, um, my, uh, George Porter Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Th- those kinds of things, those kinds of sounds. I want a base. Can't see that, Carol Kay holding a, uh, right. Yeah. You know. Actually, she does Ibanez these days. That's kind of like, whatever. <laughs> Well, I mean, back in the day, I mean, now, in other words, she would, how relevant is Carol? What K I would say is I would want a Carol K, Carol K sound. Yeah. Like back like 1960s and 70s. And that that one, would be what I would be going for. It's like having, having uh flat wound strings, but it not feel like I have to muscle it to play it. Yeah. So, and you also tried half is, round is, strings. What is it? Half round? Half round, yeah. Diderio makes half rounds. Okay. And I put those on lots of customers' bases because they're also called ground wounds. Other other brands would would call them ground wounds. Okay. Um, but the the idea is a round wound string, uh, particularly a bass string. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got one of Elwood's string packs here from ZZ Top. Um. These are so thin. Those guys use the thinnest damn strings. All I right. Can't, I, I can't even imagine how that works. These are 40 to 95. <laughs> I mean, it's like. Well, for, it's, actually, that, that, that is my uh, that is my Warwick. Really? Yeah. I'm a 45 to 105. Well, the, uh, when I had a jazz, when, I, when my jazz bass was the main bass, I think basses, at least in my experiences, certain basses ask for certain gauges. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So my jazz bass was a 45. 
Yeah. But I put 45s on it on, on the Warwick when I first bought it, and it was like, no, that's not the that's not the feel. Is it a 35 inch scale or a 34 inch? I have no idea. That's 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 where you come in. Yeah. Come to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why uh, we are different. For those of you that don't know, let's see if I, I should know because I, I bought the thing in 2000. <laughs> well, there you can see the the windings. Yeah. And essentially, on a bass string. Well, these have that ridiculous tape on them, but on a bass string, the thinner ones just have a round core wire or a hex core wire, depending on the construction, uh -huh. and then a, a, a winding around the outside. And then when you get to the bigger strings, there's actually two layers of winding. Uh -huh. um, so to get the, the bigger diameter. And um, on this bass, it's, it's, it's round wound. So... Um, the original bass strings and uh, when when bass kind of came out of the uh upright bass thing those had flat wound so it was like tape wound yes. around the round core um and flat wounds um are very mellow and rich sounding uh and when you move your fingers around there's no squeak yeah. round wounds tend to be bright and brash and 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 spiky and 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 uh um which but is which move, isn't a lot of things is fine. Um, but when you move your finger, yeah, you, you can hear that noise. So uh, I don't know who came up with it, but I, I Diderio. I when I had my shop, I sold a shit ton of these Diderio half rounds, which are round wound strings. But what they do is they grind the outside flat, so they take one third of the winding away, and it feels like you're playing a flat wound but you get a lot more bounce like a round wound. And so basically half rounds sound like perfectly broken in round wounds. Cause when you first put round wounds on it, too bright. In other words, every time I tried uh, the, uh, the flat wounds, it's always a muscle thing. In other words, they were always way too thick, maybe. And dark. And, and, and they the hit them hard to get, get some tone. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it's, so, I don't, in other words, and then uh, you remember, you know, cheese. I, okay. I had cheese on my omelet. This okay, morning. so he was a Krypton City blues bass player. Uh, um, blues One bass of the player in Harrisburg. 400. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the main dude. He was like he was like old school uh, precision man, um, and uh, wonderful yeah, bass player. I, I, what was his name? His, his Pete, real name? Pete Nesticker. Pete Nesticker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's wonderful bass player. But and I and he had a he had a precision bass and he had the uh, the flat wounds and I played his he's not struggling there's no struggle on those in other words I know it's the how the bass is set up that is a, that and and then there's the strings but the other thing is it's a fifty year old fifty some year old bass I'd like you to look it over if there's anything that can be done so it doesn't feel like a 50 year old base oh, yeah, gonna, I'll take care. like like then that's gonna fall apart if i use it i don't uh, you have uh you have the greg's bench easy pass so uh, <laughs> so, uh but get it like, out to uh, me and i'll get you hooked up so all kinds of stuff that i'm like planning with like as far as like that um recording and that kind of business and then and it's like uh um I'm excited for that because it's like that, that, that's a sound that I, I've had this bass for a while. Like it's been a, many years since he had passed. And, uh, but I never, you know, I've, I tried putting on, as I said, those strings string. I don't, until you worked on my Paul Reed Smith. I, I think you would understand how to fix it is what I'm trying to say. I will do my damnedest because you're, you're the electric man for me. I know a couple of things. Yeah, you learned a few things, yes. Your dad can fix it. He's got a righteous set of tools. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, in the comments, tell us what movie that's from. Let's okay. start that. Let's let's put a movie comment in, yes. in the thing and then uh, on the YouTube. Big old thing. pony boy. <laughs> yeah. You're my yeah. boy, Blue. <laughs> Look at all this room for activities. Right. Um, well, anyway, so uh, uh, been an interesting week. A lot of cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're uh, you're you're busier than ever. Yeah, I've never you been really need you don't never really. I guess you don't need really social media in order to get your the 
you still have the Greg Platzer guitar site. Yeah, right? I have the Instagram and the Facebook. The cool thing is, since Instagram and Facebook are owned by the same company, obviously, you just when I, put, when I put some on the Instagram, it automatically populates the Facebook. Okay, so you don't even have to touch it. So I'm not even logged into Facebook, and I can still post on it. Okay. And so um, it's kind of interesting because I've had a lot of people text me, bro, why did you block me? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, yeah. Funny Facebook. Well, I, 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 I was being funny with you. Yeah. Well, I, no, people was, literally are coming at Saturday me. that uh, you were playing up at, uh, um, in Yoakum Town. Yeah. At the Blue Sky. And uh, which, uh, praising Blue Sky, by the way, again. Fantastic. Then, like, I, I went looking for I went looking for uh, your uh, Facebook page to see what time <laughs> was was uh, you you guys are supposed to play, and uh, so uh, yeah. there's no Greg. There's no Greg. He blocked me. No, I, I knew he didn't block me. No, but I have people seriously. I yeah. mean, have been upset with me, and it's like, yeah. you know, I recommend to them the same thing that I did because mm-hmm. if you if if yeah. being blocked on Facebook bothers you that much. Is it, there's a problem. Facebook. Yeah. You know, yeah. Problem's not Facebook either. It's, it's the problem's deeper than that. For me, it does. Because no, I'm saying for yeah. most people, self control issues. Yeah. Oh, and and uh, uh, my buddy Matt. I mean, he wants his 1977 Les Paul Custom uh-huh. back. Um, this one's kind of interesting. It it uh, the finish was all worn away back here, so I redid all the the, the bursting on there it was all it was all worn away down the side so i had to blend in uh-huh. uh, new amber and uh this stuff was all pretty much gone there were just vestiges of it left so i could follow yeah. and did a factory style blend in and then there were a couple of uh, we're not gonna be able to see this but there were two little holes right here and i don't know rocket launcher maybe i don't know what what the holes were for but i filled them and and tinted that blended it in and uh the face a of part the of your a very very big part of your artistry is the uh you making stuff go away well the not just it's, you're not just chisels it, it is it is it is no the, it is the, uh, were, paint. yeah this the, the pig head the finish was terrible so you can see on there um how it's nice and smooth now and i'm gonna i've got one more layer of uh of tinted lacquer to go on there so that this is the right color uh, I worry about that, but uh, um, polished up the frets, cleaned up the board, and it just got a brand new set of Seymour Duncan pickups. Uh-huh. My buddy wow. Seymour. So uh, okay, and, question for you, know, you. I was buffing it out before we started this, and then here and there, I kind of yeah, yeah. Question you know. for you. Yeah. The tops on those pickups. Is it better to keep the tops on? Uh, that is totally personal preference. Um, on my vintage guitars uh i have i try to make them as original as possible but on on a lot of my hot rod guitars i don't have the covers um the covers shield from rf and in fact you know what i'll tell you what this is what it looks like underneath okay. all right and uh next week we're gonna we're gonna do pick up construction in detail but in a nutshell this is this is what it looks like you've got on this it's a humbucking pickup there's two coils we talked about that before um and then the cover on the 50s gibsons was german silver um so it's non-magnetic uh magnet nope 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 yeah yep so um and then what they would do is they would put it on and then solder it on. And that would shield the pickup from um, neon and uh, all manner of radiation flying around in the air around us. Um, in the late 60s, people started taking the covers off because they thought the pickup sounded hotter without them. They thought the pickup was actually getting in the way okay. of the, the tone. And it actually... They don't sound any different without the cover, but what people don't realize is with the cover on, you got it that far away 
All right. But when we take the cover off, a lot of people ended up putting it closer. Closer, right. proximity effect. It's louder. Yeah. So just because the pickup is now closer to the string, and it's a little more convenient when you have the cover out of the way. Yeah. You can get the coil closer. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, the louder, that, punchier, more dynamics. Yeah. Well, it's not because the cover was there. Yeah, yeah. The coil is now closer to the pick to the string. Okay. Well, so um, I when I was younger, I took the covers off every damn thing. And, I think it uh, looks cooler. Yeah, I I uh, it it definitely looks more hot rod. It's like taking the uh, you know, on a thirty two Model A, you take the sides of the hood off so you can see yeah. the engine. Yeah. Um, but it's not as practical. Um, I sweat like a pig on stage and the covers also protect the coils from your sweat without, without trying. I don't think anybody was sweating that hard into their guitars back then, yeah. but, um, it's not unusual for me to have to, uh, replace a pickup after a while because the sweat gets in there and just wreaks havoc with the wire. Yeah. Um, but when you see me play, um, Usually, if, if there's covers on there, it's an old guitar. And if there's no covers, it's a newer guitar. Yeah. But I just got a cool one. Rod, you talk to the people while I get this, and then we're going to sign right. them. All right. Hi, people. He's just got a new one. He's going to get it. Les Paul's abound. Ding, ding. Now, I don't name my guitars because if I call them, they don't come. So there's no point in naming them. Yeah. This one has a name. Okay. I present to you. Oh, I saw that. Yes. Liberace. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Is that crazy or is yes. that crazy? Yeah, yeah. It's a 2009 Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul Custom. Yeah. Uh, they made five in this color. All right. I had to have it. Uh, right. My buddy Richard Riley from the Bow Deadlies had it. All right. I've been after him for years. And we ended up doing a thing. I traded him an old uh, guild uh, hollow body and a pile of lettuce. And I got this guitar. Um, I promptly changed the bridge pickup out. Uh, I put a new Schecter Pasadena Plus humbucker in there because it's a perfect pickup. Mm -hmm. And I had to find an old Gibson cover to put on it because the pickup came open coils and it was zebra like that. It was a black and a cream coil. It would not look good on there. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like the way the covers look on this guitar. I put lightweight tuner buttons on and they just happen to match the, uh, the aging. Uh, He's got such a, a good uh, eye for guitars, Richard. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I have a good eye for something, but uh, I just, uh, I, I love this guitar so much. It's so over the top. Mm -hmm. And most of my guitars, uh, if anybody out there knows me, they're, you know, they're vintage Les Pauls and they're all beat up. I like beat up guitars. This one's actually pretty, mm -hmm. which, you know, I just, I don't have any pretty guitars and this is a pretty guitar. You have so. the ability, because I've always said that Les Pauls have a personality and it's not all Les Pauls feel the same way, but you have, you understand how to make them, yeah, there's certain there's things, things you can do. There's certain tricks you can do to make them completely playable. In other Absolutely. words, in other words, they have that they have different personalities. Neck. Well, a it, lot of the things I did to your PRS. Yeah. Uh, I learned from working on Les Pauls. Yeah. And um, rounding off the edges of the fingerboard, cleaning up the edges of the frets, so that they're, they're you know, so you're not cutting yourself when you go like this. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's a there's, and I, you know. My girlfriend loves Telecasters. Sarah Schiff, Sheriff is her name. And she loves Telecasters. She has a PRS endorsement. Uh, so she loves Paul Reed Smith guitars. And she's endorsed by Breedlove guitars as well. And um, for her, Telecasters or PRSs feel good. Well, I have one PRS. I have a, a DGT, David Grissom Trem. It's a great guitar. But I've had tons and tons of PRSs, but they don't work for the way i approach guitar mm -hmm. um it's a it's an essential thing in my in my arsenal but it is not the only 
yeah tool on my toolbox yeah, I, I tend to play less paul's or less paul style guitars and maybe down the road we'll talk about that because uh Schechter usa makes amazing guitars and they've made me some really cool ones actually i just lied to you i have two pretty guitars i have another one uh that i haven't used on stage yet so it's still pretty um so well that'll be a future thing you know we'll uh greg and rod's you know guitar of the week maybe. yeah yeah so one this week thing one more week, thing liberace so, liberace i saw the work you did on creating brian seneca a three pickup yeah yeah he was just here the Greek, though. yeah 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 so so what you're you were able to do and this will be something we talk about in the future um taking a guitar that is not necessarily like how many how many different companies made les pauls like well, almost I, identical but Greco, it, it needs to be said that was a guitar for the japanese market never intended to come to the united states yeah constructed equally as well as the gibsons of the time if not better uh it's a fantastically well-made guitar and what do you have there now Let's see that headstock. Oh, yeah. Orville, also made in the same factory, Fuji Gangaki. Okay, so this guitar is wonderful. Yeah, and you know what? The Greco is very similar to that, except the Greco was made in the, in the mid-'80s, and the top carve is much more pronounced, like a 50s guitar, mm -hmm. and the finish is very thin, like a 50s guitar. Yeah. But, yes, Orville Les Pauls are fantastic guitars. Yes. Uh, they're Japanese home market, top the of the line guitars. between... Is there a big, do you see a big difference between the Les Paul Custom and the Orville? Uh, not, not, nowhere near as big as, as, like the difference between that guitar and this guitar, the people that built that guitar had more fun at work than the people that built this guitar. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, with detail, I can make both of them play almost identically. Okay. Because that one's built to a very high standard. This is built to a very high standard. Mm -hmm. Um. But with any company, detail is everything. And, um, you know, I talked about this earlier, finding the hidden utility in something. And when they when you're making seven of these, 12 of these, 20 of these a day, you can't you can't detail down to the nth degree. Yeah. When you brought me your PRS, it, it was in great shape. And it was, you know, it, well, that's it back was, back when it, I and you know better than I do. But that that guitar is 30 years old. Yeah. Ish. Yeah, yeah, 30 ish. Okay. Um back then they were personal. They they were very much hands were still being made in some way in in the making of the guitar. Their the hand was, still was a thing. And still are at PRS. I got to say that's yeah. the, well, they especially really especially the Maryland ones. And this is a Gibson custom shop, so supposedly, you know, it was it's it's held to a higher standard than just a regular Gibson production. That being said, I think their standards are pretty uniform. Let's get it finished and get it out. And uh, so, you know, I went through and detailed this and after I do your base, bring me the Orville and I'll go through that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's so much potential in that Orville that is unrealized. That's all um, I've been playing for the last like couple of weeks. It's yeah. Wonderful. Well, and you know, it, it, I don't care what you do. If you're doing a lot of it, you can't do all the little individual things that need to be done. I don't care if you're making golf clubs or guitars or airplane wings or whatever. I would hope with airplane wings, you're doing a good job. Um, so I, I'm lucky that I don't have anybody uh, whipping me if I spend more than 3.2 minutes on a guitar. I can take as long as I want to make it right. And I put hours into Liberace here to get it, you know, where I like it. The way you need and, it, yeah. I mean, that it's so distastefully gaudy that I love it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a vintage guitar guy. Look at this thing, you yeah. know? I mean, I'm looking at it on the screen, and it, it's just really crazy. But you can see they did the right carve. Um, there you can see that the, the, the top is, mm -hmm. is, is pretty aggressively carved on this, and the Orvilles are a little more dished. They're not quite as pronounced. Mm -hmm. But uh, that Greco for Seneca... Um, that thing was a it was a it was a two pickup guitar like this. Now it's a three pickup and all kinds of neat you know sound observations. Is he a huge Peter uh, Frampton uh, fan? Uh, no, no, neither okay. of us. He didn't want it for that reason. No, or else we would have put cream plastic on it and all okay. that. 
Uh, no, the idea was to make it look like a well Steve Marriott too, I think, right? Say again? Did Steve Marriott have a, what, what was Marriott his? Marriott had, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, the idea was just to make it look, I mean, he even said this morning, he was here, we were going through songs, and uh, he told Sarah, he's like, oh, I'm such a cork sniffer. I never even thought about looking away from Gibson. Um, and he was, you know, looking at spending like three grand for a guitar. And I, I got that at the Philly show. And I got to say, I was more stoked about buying that than buying a $10,000 Les Paul. Mm -hmm. And um, I brought it home and, and he played it and he was like, oh my God. And uh, now that we've gone through and detailed it and everything, today we put proper vintage style tuners on, took the crappy Japanese tuners off. And uh, it's just, it's a magnificent guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll show that on a, on a future yeah. thing as well. All right. All right, Uncle Greg. Liberace says goodbye. Liberace, Liberace, uh, your your band yeah. again? What we had a part time? What is it? Prime what? time heroes. Prime time heroes. Look at that thing. That's crazy. Coming, coming a town near you. Coming Hope. to a town near you, or not? It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's that's what it's supposed to be. Two guys that can play guitar. Uh huh. So we, we have fun and we we're trading off and we're going for it and uh, mm -hmm. we're. Tighten the tight spots and loosen the loose spots. It's really kind of fun. It's wonderful. So thank you, guitar nerds. Thank you at the Be bench. good to each other. Be good to each other. Be good to each other. And we'll see you next time. Hopefully. In the comments, list all the, the movies that we quoted. Yes. It's my boy, Blue. <laughs> Thank old pony boy. Oh boy. That's my boy, Blue. That's my boy, Blue. That's my boy, Liver. Liberace. All right. See y'all. <laughs> Everybody be good.